If you're new to Globetrotting, hit that subscribe button. Really trying to aim for 100,000 one day and your support will always be appreciated. The 747-500 was a bold proposal by American manufacturer Boeing to try and evolve the position of the iconic 747 further and to ensure that it had some form of survival for decades to come. The proposed Dash 500, however, was ultimately just one of the many variants that were part of a broader 747 family studied to elevate this. However, despite internal interest, Boeing decided to proceed with other endeavours that it believed would be the answer to help propel the 747 into the 21st century. Did that really work out? Well, some would probably say no, but at the time, Boeing felt they were moving forward with the right means. So, beginning the studies of the 747-500 was a lengthy process. From the midway point of the 1900s, right up to the turn of the century, the development of the aviation industry was evident. Leading from the front, Boeing was a real key part to this, with the advancements in technology aiding their innovation to find ways to continue developing their planes to really meet airlines' requirements pushing those boundaries that had been set out by a predecessor. The development of a 747 was considered the true dream, with the aircraft affectionately known as the Queen of the Skies being very important in fueling many airlines' growth targets. As the 747 developed and new customers joined the program, Boeing knew it had the opportunity to continue growing and find ways to bring in more customers. Furthermore, as technology continued developing, well, there was a consensus that more opportunities existed than maybe they were tapping into. The 747-500's vision emerged even before the debut of the Dash 400, where Boeing saw potential to create a new variant. Rather outlandish when you think about it, because the aim would be to have counter-rotating turboprop engines. The premise was Boeing saw a vision where maximum fuel efficiency could be achieved moving forward. This would give airlines that were either A, already operating the 747, or B, prospective ones, a real reason to upgrade from their existing platform. Such an endeavour wasn't foreign, with Boeing also exploring something similar through its 7J7 project. This was a more modest, short-haul narrow-body plane, similar to, say, your 717 and 727. One thing that defined the 747-500 was its proposed reliance on advanced propulsion technologies. They considered this as a means to power the variant. However, the premise of these engines faced their complexities. You've got high noise levels and and apart from this, there was scepticism from airlines and airports about really the long-term viability of such a plane. This generalised pushback that Boeing was seeing to really move past the drawing board made it hard for them to find really a balance between offering efficiency and increasing the capabilities of the plane from a range and capacity standpoint, which we knew to be two selling points for the series, to bring this variant to life. Boeing knew it would need to incorporate changes into an existing 747 body, and attempting to do so without seeing a massive cost associated and also overruns in terms of time, well, it would definitely impact the business. Leaps in technology are fantastic and often enable manufacturers such as Boeing to study prospective opportunities. However, not all make sense and therefore not all formally progress into a launch state. Despite this, it's really important to note that every study is valuable. In the case of Boeing, it allowed them to continue moving forward with their innovation and understanding what would work from a commercial standpoint and what is genuinely feasible for their own business to actually implement without seeing resource and cost implications that would be negative. One thing to definitely take a look at is market dynamics. We were really seeing a pivotal shift begin across the industry when the 747-500 was gaining traction in the late 1980s. 80s and early 1990s. Twin engined aircraft such as the 767 were gaining popularity. This was definitely driven by the regulatory changes we were beginning to see thanks to ETOPS and the continued growth with that regard. New rules allowing twin engine jets to really operate on transoceanic routes further away from an airport at the one time. While not for all airlines, these developments did reduce for many operators the desire to strictly need, say, a 747 like aircraft. Now, there were greater possibilities present with half the amount of engines, and especially not for something like a 
747-500. Arguably, the very early stages of a trend would see airlines beginning these twin-engine planes that would offer them greater cost advantages alongside the all-important word of flexibility, a word I love to use here on the channel, but one that has definitely stuck now as we've moved into the mid-2020s. Moreover, airlines capable of serving ultra-long-haul markets that were pitched a 747-500 felt that there would be limitations. The reality is that thanks to the technological advancements in the 21st centuries, more airlines can nowadays fly missions with distance in a profitable manner, but it wasn't always like this. It certainly left some airlines out of the equation of serving markets that they maybe once would. The 747-500 really did face its challenges from a feasibility standpoint to even an overall interest. Despite Boeing presenting interest in the prospective variant, like many others, it never formally got off the ground. And by the time the mid-1990s came around, the twin-engine age was certainly rampaging on. Boeing shelved any prospects for a 747-500 and began focusing on other programs and initiatives. Certainly, this wasn't the last attempt to revolutionize the 747 program. We saw those proposed X variants, but even that didn't get off the ground. In the end, actually driven by the development of a twin-engine plane in the 787, while well, the American plane maker decided to progress with a 7478 that would take on fundamentals from the new gen wide body and implement it on a larger scale. The 7478 remains the final variation of the Queen of the Skies, and unsurprisingly, it failed quite miserably from a commercial standpoint, with little to no interest in an industry rapidly changing and seeing airlines shifting away from planes such as the 747, but even extending that over towards the Airbus A380. Had Boeing progressed with a 747-500, by the time it would have reached market, it also would have encountered quite a fair bit of turbulence, with the industry changing and therefore affecting the market for such a plane. So in hindsight, maybe it was the right decision to not move ahead with it. Also, this being a plane that was never progressed with, one thing it certainly highlights is that all-important fight that plane makers face when balancing innovation with feasibility. Their ambition to create a new-gen jumbo was constrained by an industry that, while was evolving, was ultimately moving away from the planes that Boeing had relied upon for some time. Despite these studies, it wasn't as if Boeing couldn't dedicate resources to other programs. The launch of the 777 and then the 787 certainly have highlighted Boeing's commitment to the next generation twin-engine wide-body operation. Today, the 747-500 certainly sits in that all-important hall of fame for the American manufacturer, with other conceptual aircraft, even in the 747 family, that never got off the ground. During the latter stages of the 20th century, just to really conclude, Boeing found itself at a period where innovation was at the forefront and we were seeing so many exciting prospects put forward, something arguably since I've been born we haven't really seen to the same scale. But finding that all-important sweet spot for a new program to launch and be profitable was always going to be the number one priority. And that's why, looking back to the latter stages of the 1900s, we really have seen so many conceptual aircraft, some more detailed than others, that never really got off the ground, all played a role in helping Boeing go in the right direction. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks a bunch for your support. Take care, be safe, and I will indeed see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And we'll fly.